Hey guys, this is Sarah, and uh, I'm just doing a very quickie book review on something that I just finished reading um, weeks ago now. And it was An Apple a Day by Emma Wolf. Um, it is a sort of memoir of her struggle with anorexia and how she is trying to deal with it and fix it fix it or I don't know at least have it be a bit more manageable specifically because she and her boyfriend Tom want to have a baby and she is unable because of her low body weight to actually conceive because she hasn't had a period in like 10 years um by the end of the book she had actually managed to do this but um, it's really weird, uh, because this is sort of almost a companion alongside, um, articles, and she had a, a column, she had a column in Times, I think, um, and she chronicled her, her journey very publicly there for about two years, and yeah, um, still had very disordered thoughts around food um certainly all the language she used sounded like she hadn't really recovered completely or really um i found it really weird because the sort of phrasing that she was using like she definitely sounded like she felt like she had made huge strides um but yeah very very interesting read um very much a memoir and also very strange because although she'll pick apart like a lot of her what she admits to be ridiculous eating practices and beliefs in the book then of course I went and checked out her social media and things that she said and she's also a presenter for uh, super fat versus super skinny which I found very interesting, uh, being that she, of course, suffers from anorexia and how she even admitted, like, she had gone, she had taken being very helpful and, like, wanting to be... It's, it's very strange. It's very strange because, like, for instance, her Twitter account, a lot of the keywords that she uses to describe her Twitter account um, are things that, you know, very much, like, identify along with the anorexia. It's, it's very strange. Um, not very strange. I mean, it makes sense. It's I don't know, it's hard. It's hard. It's a very interesting read, but it reminds me a lot of, um, was it Dying to be Thin? No, it's Nikki Graham one. Um, the book by Portia de Rossi, which was very similar, where she clearly thinks that she has made this huge amount of progress but then when you know you actually see like more recent stuff that she's doing you're like looking at her and okay I mean you're still not what most people consider a healthy weight but you consider yourself cured but you're it's not It's, I don't know how to say it other than like it's not, like they talk about how they're dealing with it and everything and it's all of these outside forces and it's sort of like any extremely disordered thinking where of course you're supposed to like have that internal motivation, not the external and you know for instance for Emma, she wants to have a baby and so, like, that's an internal motivation in a way, but 
not because she's also, you know, quite a lot of times like talking with Twing with the idea of using this fertility drug that will force her to ovulate um, and never really abandons that as an option. Like, it almost feels like she never sort of like goes all in and when she describes her relationship with her and her boyfriend Tom, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound the healthiest. I mean, obviously there's, you know, traditionally healthy and then healthy-ish that works for you and it sort of sounds like that and it's, it, I don't know, it's really weird. Um, all in all, like, it was an interesting read. Um, obviously some people could consider it a trigger warning. I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about trigger warnings because honestly, I find that, you know, life is a trigger, you know, for most people and a lot of things, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. Uh, definitely, I don't know, it was like... <laughs> it's very strange. Very, it was, it was an interesting read, but at the same time, <sighs> the whole time I was reading it, I was like, I didn't feel like she was invested in it, in her own recovery. Not really. Like, there seemed to be like, and obviously that, that's a big problem, is like, recovering from that kind of a disorder, because... You know, she's like explaining how, you know, it's not that I won't eat these things, that I can't. Almost like it's a compulsion. Um, and, you know, but then she was like really happy about, you know, studies that had come out linking, you know, certain anorexic behaviors to people with autism. And then she was like, and I'm very particular in OCD about a bunch of these other things. And it's like, you know, the thing is about all that science that's really great that you have this information and I get that you find it interesting, but maybe you should definitely still seek real professional therapy and you should, if it means that much to you, just keep cracking, you know? Like anybody, you know, you can't, some Miriam with serious chronic depression, like you can't blame them for it. Yes, a certain amount is going to be chemical amounts, but yes, by all means, like, do the therapy thing, like, do the things, do everything in your power, and do not quit until you at least can feel better. Like, not to be condescending or to minimize anybody else's effort or journey. You know, everybody has their own struggles, but, like, it's on you. Like, it's all in your court. You can't give up. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't imagine having side zero genes, but I could never imagine wanting so hard to look good that I was like, I'm not going to eat like this delicious steak. I don't know. It's just me. Anyway, um, but yeah, it was an interesting book. Uh, I don't know necessarily that I would recommend it. Um, and I also did the audiobook version, and I think that was the other thing. Some people do the audiobook reading very well. Um, hers was quite dispassionate, and, uh, um, it was a decent performance, but at the same time, it was like, hmm, Um, I mean, certainly, if you're interested in that kind of topic, and I mean, obviously, I sure it's pretty obvious I sit on the other end of the scale um where I just, I'm I definitely feel like I, I sit more in like a binge eater category um and it's it's interesting to see how people sort of get help and I think the one thing that I've I've read a few books like this now and I've noticed that I've yet to read one where actual recovery, marked recovery, is attained 
in a way that's actually explained, like the Portia de Rossi book. Um, I mean, she definitely looks more healthy than she did years ago. Uh, I definitely think she's made great strides. And like she's, she herself certainly feels like she is for the most part beaten it and she, you know, keeps an eye on everything and, you know, life is an everyday struggle and all that. But she also didn't actually explain what treatment you know, she went through, it was really weird, you know, she talked about all the therapies that failed, but then never actually kind of talked about the one that worked for her. Um, and like with this Emma Wolf one, like, she never really talked about what actually worked for her. She was talking about being on a bunch of different things, like, you know, positive thinking and visualization and all of these other things you know um and she almost seemed to ascribe it mostly to the visualization causing her to like actually menstruate again and it was i don't know it was strange see this is the thing i can only say it was really strange like i i think that she thinks that she is she's maybe not cured but definitely on the road to recovery and I hope that she is. She seems like somebody who is maybe still not happy with her life. That's what it sounds like. I don't know. And I also tried to find information online because I was curious as to whether or not her and Tom are still together, but I couldn't find any information on that either. It was... yeah. Yeah. But she has a pretty decent online presence, so if you're interested in her, or the book, or both, um, you know, she's, she's got, uh, a couple of books out, one fiction, um, I'm interested in checking out The Ministry of Thin, that seems interesting, I don't know what it's about, I'm gonna check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon, bye.